we are in Florence, Italy. If you are new to our Italy travel series, we've been to Rome and Sorrento already. So I will link those videos down below if you are curious or you're interested in those places. But we are in Florence. We arrived here yesterday and we got here around four o'clock and we were just so exhausted from just the travel day we kind of laid down took a nap after we got checked into our hotel then we got dinner we ate it in the room and we went to bed super early so that we would wake up today feeling very refreshed and ready to go we are only going to be in florence for a full day we get a rental car tomorrow and we head out on our tuscan road trip which is going to be an adventure all in itself so very excited about that but today the plan is to just go out and get breakfast and um, shop around we're hoping to hit some antique stores maybe some thrift stores here in Florence if we can find some and um, maybe just go to like Ponte Vecchio and just just a few different things we don't really have a set plan we've been to Florence in the past we've done a lot of the touristy stuff already so um, we didn't really create a plan for Florence specifically we just kind of wanted to enjoy our day here and enjoy our time just kind of being chill so that's that's mainly our plan for today so we're gonna go ahead and go out get breakfast and we are very excited to spend the day here in florence and very excited to take you all along with us our first full day in florence started with rain but it did not take away from the beauty of the city i honestly think it's safe for me to say that florence is my favorite city to visit in italy to start the day we had a delicious breakfast and a cappuccino at the cutest cafe we have ever found in Florence. The atmosphere was quite different from the city as it was a more modern and vibrant atmosphere. The staff were so friendly and welcoming to tourists, which is a major plus. After breakfast, we walked over to the open air leather market. Florence is known for their beautiful leather goods and is home to the world's best leather craftsmen. You can find unique leather shops pretty much anywhere around the city, but there is an open air market that is located in the center of the city that offers a wide variety of handcrafted items. From journals to keychains, backpacks, belts, handbags, jackets, there really is something for everyone if you're interested in purchasing an original Florentine leather piece. One of our favorite places to visit in Florence is the square that's within the Uffizi Gallery. There are several street artists who sit there throughout the day painting and selling their art. We have purchased two pieces of art from the same artist on two separate occasions and they truly mean so much to us. We stumbled upon a paper shop called ePapero and honestly, it was a highlight of our trip. We got a live demonstration of how their products are created by the sweet and highly talented man working in the shop. Just because we have the glue working like that, all over the surface, just like that, this is something you have to make by yourself. And that's why they're never the same. We probably spent 15 minutes watching the demonstration before, of course, purchasing a couple of products to bring home. I got a beautiful journal, a calligraphy pen that uses ink, and a wax seal stamp. Each of these items are so special to me and remind me of Florence each time I use them. Thankfully, the sun decided to make an appearance in the afternoon and we were able to finish our day of exploring in the warmth of the Tuscan sun. Florence is truly beautiful rain or shine, but the sunlight beaming on the charming buildings really helped bring them to life. We took a stroll by the iconic cathedral in Duomo, which is breathtaking no matter how many times you see it. The cathedral is named to honor Santa Maria del Fiore and was built in the 13th century. And the magnificent, very beautiful dome was added in the 15th century by Filippo Brunelleschi. The dome was actually named Brunelleschi's Dome and it's an iconic symbol of Florence. The exterior of the cathedral is covered in the most beautiful pink, green, and white marble and has gothic style characteristics and detail. Entry inside the cathedral is free, which is why you will often see a massive line 
But if you want to see the museum, the baptistry, or climb to the top of the dome, which will give you a beautiful view of the city of Florence, you will have to purchase a pass for those. After seeing the Duomo, we made our way over to another iconic symbol of Florence, Ponte Vecchio. Ponte Vecchio, known as Old Bridge, was the only bridge to cross the Arno River until 1218, and it was the only bridge that did not get destroyed by the Germans in World War II. In the early days, the shops that were along the bridge were used for blacksmiths and butchers, but due to the smell and the noise, they were replaced with jewelers and goldsmiths. As you cross over the bridge today, you're still greeted with jewelry shops, and it is so fun to stroll and window shop, admiring the beautiful jewelry that's being sold. To end our day, we found some local antique shops and spent some time browsing around one of our favorite activities to do even when we travel. I quickly wanted to share a room tour of the apartment that we stayed in while we were in Florence. Our host was absolutely incredible and she paid so much close attention to details. When you walked in the door, there was a sound machine playing music. There was a candy dish. She always had snacks and treats spread out all over the coffee table in the living situation. And even our room was just very detail oriented. It seemed like it was freshly renovated and it was always just so clean and nice. I love the wood beams and the drapes along the windows. The bed is just so beautiful and characteristic with the canopy style bed. The bathroom was very modern and clean and up to date. It was just overall a 10 out of 10 experience. I absolutely loved it. I would personally stay here again and I really recommend this place to anyone who's going to Florence. Also, it was in the perfect location, very close to the train station, but also very close to the Duomo. Before heading to the airport to pick up our rental car, we went back for another cappuccino at our favorite little cafe, and then I went to the Golden Goose store to customize a new pair of sneakers. The artist who worked with me on the customization was so incredibly sweet. It is so nice to meet people when you're traveling to a foreign country that make you feel welcome and genuinely want to know a little bit about you. Not only was she kind, but she was insanely talented. She showed us her sketchbook and previous sneaker designs and we were truly amazed. Golden Goose is a luxury shoe brand that originated in Italy. I personally love their sneakers and I was so excited to get to customize a pair, which make them one of a kind. It was a fun experience and I highly recommend it if you're interested in treating yourself on your trip to Italy. We just made it to our car rental place. We are getting ready to head out on the roads of Tuscany. Wish us luck. This is going to be an adventure in and of itself. So kind of nervous, kind of scared, but we have our rental car. We've got all of our luggage in here and we are ready for an adventure. So Tuscany, here we come. We made it to our bed and breakfast in Tuscany and it's absolutely stunning. I did not realize how much I was gonna love the countryside and we have picked an absolutely beautiful place to stay. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm getting ready to do a little room tour before we get our luggage brought in here and everything like that. But the grounds of this property are just absolutely stunning. Um, and they definitely go the extra mile, the people who own it. I think it is a family ran like bed and breakfast and they definitely go the extra mile we were gifted a complimentary wine tour um, that's on property with our stay here. They gifted us a bottle of wine, which is their family's homemade wine. And you can just tell that they pay very close attention to the details here. So I couldn't have asked for any better. I'm very excited with the place that we're staying. And um, really quickly before Alex brings the luggage in, I'm gonna give you guys a room tour of the inside. And then we will show you a tour of the outside when we leave to go to dinner. Okay, so you walk up to the second floor and we have our own little room over here. This is our room. But before we go in there, I was gonna show you the vineyard and the pool. We this door and there's like a little seating area. We just have our luggage. And it enters to our bedroom. First, we have this little snack station. There's a mini fridge. Oops, it's not focusing. There's a mini fridge. 
And then we have our dresser with a complimentary bottle of wine from the family. And then over here we have our bed wardrobe situation that has our towels for the pool, an extra blanket in case we get cold. I believe those are robes, a little safe, super cute. We have a seating area here. I think that the artwork is just so cute. This is just like a little cottage. This is our view from our window. I just cannot even. And then if you walk in here, it'll take you to the bathroom. And I like how they have the mixed match mirrors here. I think that's super cute. And then we have another window in the bathroom. The same view. And then a nice big walk-in shower with a rain shower head. I love that the shower has like a little lot right here. I think that's so unique. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we just got ready for dinner and it's about, I think it's about 7, maybe 7.30. And we are going to go to this little town that we're staying in. So we're staying in like the countryside, of course, but there's a little town close by. I think it's a nine minute drive and it's called Montalcino. And so we're going to go there and get dinner tonight. And I got my disposable here to take some cute pics. And I think the sun is setting now. So we're going to get ready, go to dinner and explore Montalcino. It's the next day and we got up this morning, had breakfast at our hotel, laid by the pool for a little bit, and then we went to our room to get ready. And we are in San Gimignano for lunch and we're gonna walk around for a couple of hours. And then after we leave San Gimignano, we're gonna go to the town of Siena. And I don't know if we'll eat dinner there or not, but that's just kind of the plan. Spend some time in San Gimignano and then also go to Siena today and then we'll figure out dinner a little bit later. So we're going to get out of the car. The parking situation was a very tight squeeze. Stressful a little bit, um, but we got parked. That's all that matters. And we're gonna go ahead and head on up, try to find something for lunch and take in the views because the views from San Gimignano are really, really good. Some of my favorite views of Tuscany. We've been here once before, but we had very limited time. So this time we're gonna be able to take our time and walk around and see what all is here. San Gimignano has the nickname the Manhattan of the Middle Ages because this little town is known worldwide for its unique architecture and numerous medieval towers. The first historical document to actually mention the town of San Gimignano dates back to 929 AD. Located between Florence and Siena, you can see San Gimignano from a distance as it sits on top of a hill and has 13 of its 72 14th century medieval towers remaining. In the main square, you will find Gelateria Dondoli serving their world champion variety of gelato. I got strawberry and chocolate chip. I asked for chocolate and chocolate chip. It's okay. Uh, the strawberry. I don't really like the chocolate chip. I do think it's really good. Is it the best gelato I've ever had? No. That place in Rome is the best I've ever had. But it's still really good and refreshing on a hot day. Because San Gimignano sits on top of a hill, the views are astounding. You are able to take in the views of the rolling hills, vineyards, and olive groves from several different viewpoints around the city. All right, so we are just now leaving San Gimignano. It is 5.45. We actually stayed there a lot longer than we planned on staying. We only planned to stay for like two, two and a half hours, but we ended up eating lunch and it was really good. Then we went to a gelato place. It's like world famous, world champion gelato place that we watched a lot of videos on. And so we wanted to try out the gelato there. So we did that. And then we just kind of walked around, shopped around and just really enjoyed the city. 
We love San Gimignano. I think it's a really cute little medieval town. Um, definitely worth coming to, in my opinion. So now we're just trying to decide if we're going to go back to our room or if we want to head on to Siena or if we want to try to do Siena tomorrow. We're not really sure. So I guess we're going to try to figure that out and we'll see what we end up doing. This is our last day in Tuscany, last full day, and we had a very relaxing morning at our villa. And we had breakfast, we laid by the pool, we swam in the pool, we just kind of took it easy. And then we went back into the room, we've gotten ready, gotten changed, and now we are headed out to drive the Val d'Orsha, which is like the valley here in Tuscany, I believe. So it goes through a couple of different towns and I don't know which ones we're gonna stop at. I know that our main destination is Monte Pulciano and we are gonna have dinner there, but we're hoping to catch the sunset um, at some point driving the Val d'Orsha, so. If you're driving through Tuscany, then I highly recommend taking the day and driving the Val d'Orsha, stopping in at different towns along the way. The Val d'Orsha is the valley that's located in the province of Siena. Driving through Tuscany had always been at the top of my bucket list, but I never realized that the Val d'Orsha would exceed all of my expectations of Tuscany and bring my dreams to life. Along the drive, you're able to see ancient villages, spectacular farmhouses, cypress tree-lined roads, which are an iconic symbol of Tuscany, isolated homesteads, rolling hills, and of course, so many beautiful vineyards and olive groves. We spent all day driving the valley, stopping in at Pienza, as well as Monte Pulciano. On our way back, we caught the most beautiful sunsets at the most iconic place in Tuscany. Driving through the Val d'Orsha, spending the day with Alex and catching this beautiful sunset can go in my book as one of the best days of my entire life. So if you find yourself in Tuscany, I highly recommend renting a car and driving the Val d'Orsha. Our time in Tuscany has unfortunately come to an end, but we have enjoyed every single minute that we have spent here. The Tuscan countryside is absolutely stunning and it's something that pictures and videos don't really do justice. It, it's just something that you have to come and experience for yourself to really get that full effect and full experience. But this has been the perfect ending to summer. It's been a trip that we will absolutely never forget. We've made so many good memories. We've seen a lot of beautiful places, but I think driving through Tuscany is a highlight of my life. It's something that I'm just never going to forget and something I'm always going to cherish and we will definitely be back. The bed and breakfast that we stayed at was perfect. They were so nice, sweet, kind. Um, they really paid attention to detail and we had a really good experience there as well. So we are headed back to Florence now to drop off our rental car and then we catch a train from Florence to Rome. And then we will have one last evening in Rome and we fly home tomorrow. We made it to our final stop, which is Rome. We're here for one more night. We're at the hotel now. And we've already went out to get dinner and one last gelato. And we just kind of um, took in the city and stayed off our phones and really soaked in our last night here. So we're getting ready to pack our suitcases up, which is not going to be an easy task. I've already had to buy another bag to check and it is also full so I don't know how we're gonna make this work it's gonna be a miracle but nonetheless that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get off here we're going to pack up our suitcases we have a uh, flight tomorrow around 1 o'clock and we will be headed home so we really hope that you have enjoyed our Italy series we've had so much fun bringing you guys along and making this video so we just hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did filming it so make sure to check out my Instagram I'll have it linked on the screen here we uh, did stories all throughout the trip and I saved them to the Italy 2022 highlights. So you may get recommendations on food, restaurants, uh, things to do, etc. This is our third time here in Italy. So if you have any questions, we may be able to help you out. Just leave us a uh, question down below in the comments and I may try to film a Q&A video 
later on to help you guys out if there's enough questions. So thank you again for watching the video. We really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe before you leave. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the travel video. And we will see you very soon in our next video. Ciao.